welcome to the Pharmacy Podcast Show. You can find all of our episodes at PharmacyPodcast.com. Internos residentes del área farmacéutica. ¿Estás interesado en expandir tu conocimiento y experiencia dentro de Health Dynamic? En este momento estamos buscando a P1 graduados en 2021 y P2 graduados en 2020 que estén interesados en puestos farmacéuticos dentro de nuestra residencia de verano Summer Retail Spanish Immersion Internship a partir del 4 de junio hasta el 10 de agosto del 2018. Hello, this is Kara Healy. I am Senior Advisor of Pharmacist Talent Acquisition with CBS Health, and you are listening to the Pharmacy Podcast. Hey, welcome back to the Spanish Immersion Podcast Series sponsored by CBS Health Careers. We're excited to have two more participants back that are part of the organization to really talk about the benefit of this program, which we've had part one and two. If you haven't listened to those first, please go down into the show notes. If you're driving, just look up the CVS Health Spanish Immersion and uh, podcast. It'll come right up in all three parts. But I want to welcome Kara Healy and Ron Snow to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. And Ron is not a first timer. This is uh, veteran stuff for Ron. Uh, hello, guys. How are you? Hi there. Great. Doing well. Glad to be back. So I'm going to start a question out for Kara. Can you please tell us about the opportunities in California? And there are 15 sites candidates can apply into. And can you describe some of these uh, geographical areas where these sites are located? Absolutely, yes. We do have 15 sites in California for the summer immersion internship, and they are quite varied as far as geographical areas. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. Um, we have anything from an urban core area of LA. We have more rural farming communities in Central Valley. We also have a lot of coastal Mediterranean markets, so places like Watsonville, which is in Santa Cruz County, Salinas and Monterey County, Santa Maria and Ventura. So those are beautiful, sunny, 70 degree weather year round, ocean breeze areas. At the rural Central Valley, we have places like Los Banos and Tulare, which are more farming communities where people can really connect in with those communities and learn more about what it means to serve a rural underserved population. And then, like I said, we have more urban areas in the LA area as well as some suburban areas. So places like Orange County and the San Fernando Valley. So lots of opportunities out there. Thanks, Kara. You know, Ron, you worked in 2017 to help bring together a professor to CBS Health who taught a Spanish medical terminology course to last summer's uh, first cohort of Spanish immersion interns. So CVS will be offering the course again to students during the Spanish immersion internship this coming summer. Can you tell us more about this course? Sure, Todd, I'd be happy to. Actually, we did bring a professor in who not only has his pharmacy degree as PharmD, but he also had a BA in Spanish and Portuguese studies. So we felt he was just the, the perfect candidate to be able to, to conduct this course. And really, um, he also teaches a medical Spanish for pharmacy professional course uh, at, his, at his institution. So we just brought him together. It was a half-day video conference. And uh, the whole program really uh, the, was designed to prepare our Spanish immersion interns uh, for them to become more linguistically and culturally um, prepared to have the uh, conversations and to serve the needs of the Hispanic patient population that they're serving. So in episode two of the Spanish Immersion podcast series, we were talking to some of the students that have uh, evolved and become employees and kind of gave testimony to the actual program. And it was really interesting, uh, Kara, that comments were coming from the vast amounts of seniors who bring their children into the store with them and how important it is to be able to not only speak the language, but understand the culture. Um, it's just a difference in, in one, pe one person to another and having that empathy and passion is so uh, necessary. So what do you think is the need for Spanish speaking pharmacists, let's say in California today and into the future? 
Mm -hmm. So as we know, the the patient population, the Spanish-speaking patient population is growing exponentially. So there is and will continue to be a need for Spanish-speaking pharmacists in a lot of different areas. And I, a lot of the areas that I've outlined, you know, as far as both in the Central Valley and then throughout Southern California. So there's a current need, absolutely, and I would completely agree with I would echo the sentiments of those students in that we want to make sure we can communicate in their first language to any patient that walks through our door so we can better serve them as patients and help them on their path to better health. And so that need definitely exists now, and we don't foresee you know, it getting any less in the future. So we'll continue to hire pharmacists and need quality individuals to be able to fulfill that need and, um, throughout California. So, absolutely. You know, Ron, you've been involved in this, so you see it from multiple perspectives and finding the right talent and career um, pathways and the right people to become part of your team. How was this course delivered since the Spanish immersion interns are in many states and cities across the country? Yeah, well, I think the first thing we did, obviously, um, we had interns all across, like you said, we had California, Texas, Florida, Illinois, DC. Those are just to name a few of the locations. So uh, specifically with the, with the um, course that our professor taught, uh, again, that was a video conference with interns across the country. So he did that to kind of level set and give them a basic understanding of, of the Spanish, of the Hispanic culture. So the, the course that he taught included things like the difference in how Hispanics relate to pharmacy and pharmacists than how our traditional English speaking patients do. He gave them communication strategies with this particular population base. Uh, we went over sp Spanish pronunciation of common medical terms. He reviewed how to communicate prescription directions in Spanish. Uh, we went over routes of administration, the Spanish word, and how, how to best to communicate that. Uh, we talked about Spanish pronunciation of indications for drug use, uh, different phrases for techniques of medication administration, uh, and even went in to talk about the common herbal remedies used in popular Hispanic culture. So, so our, I, our whole purpose behind this was to give them a really good basic background also to kind of build up. So we didn't necessarily want to have interns that were really proficient in Spanish. Uh, we were looking at those that may have taken a few, uh, a few years in high school or hadn't taken it since high school. Uh, and they still needed a little bit of refresher course. So that's what this particular course did for them. And it was just to build them up. And then uh, obviously a lot of the, the, uh, during the particular 10 weeks that they were in the program, uh, we really just outlined our basic internship program with them. With, uh, and I think we'll probably end up talking about that a little bit later, giving them some other opportunities to do some things outside of the norm. Uh, but really, it all started with giving them that real good base knowledge and to get them to feel a little bit comfortable. Uh, and we took it from there. When I had first learned about the Spanish Immersion Internship I thought between the courses, because I was reading through some of the courses and pieces that you guys put together for the students and for your intern, and I was wondering, do you ever encourage them to get one of those language programs on the side um, during this time to kind of fortify what they're learning? Well, I'm actually glad you mentioned that. So we actually provided them with a number of different um, uh, I guess we gave a number of different, uh, but we gave them a number of different opportunities to help them. We gave them a handbook on Spanish terminology, but then the thing that I think was really the most helpful is we provided them an opportunity for, uh, they had access to Rosetta Stone for Spanish. So all of our interns uh, were able to do that. We also provided that to our uh, preceptors as well. So we were excited about the opportunity to do that so that they could become more proficient in Spanish. Ron, I've started down the Rosetta Stone road for my own Spanish uh, background. So I want to want to learn. I want to be fluent in Spanish within the next three years. So um, leaning on my um, my step uh, mother in law, which I'm excited that she is bilingual and understands the language that she's been helping me. But um, Kara, I'm wondering what can an intern expect to learn during the Spanish immersion internship this summer, specifically in California? 
Mm-hmm. So, well, as with our other sites across the country, the interns are going to have the opportunity to progress through the structured intern training program that's designed to grow their personal and professional skills and enhance their clinical, managerial, and leadership skills. And the program really was designed to provide students with those, the tools and the training necessary in, in an experience-centric manner to be able to manage and lead pharmacy teams. Um, and they go through, you know, different experiences that fall into different categories, such as patient care and customer service. And I think what's unique in the Spanish Immersion Internship Program in, in California is that these experiences are going to be viewed through the lens of serving the Spanish-speaking population base and the community where they're completing their internship. And, you know, as with anywhere in the country, where the community in which you're serving is going to be, you know, different from, from city to city, from geographical location to geographical location, I think it's really neat for them to be able to kind of connect into California and see, number one, is is this a, a population that they might want to serve down down the road in the future as pharmacists? Um, and is this a, are these particular communities um, somewhere that they feel called to serve and, and what they learn from, you know, from the culture in each of the places that they're practicing in the summer through this internship experience? So, um, yeah, I think uh, it's just about really connecting into the individual communities and and seeing a culture that's different. And it's neat that we open it up to you know students from all across the country that might not have ever you know ever even traveled to California and then being able to come to the state and see what it has to offer and and the patients that they would potentially be able to serve down the road will I think paint uh, paints a really nice picture for them. So as students, Kara, if I was listening to the podcast and I'm thinking about this as a possibility for myself, I wonder, are there any, I don't know, are there any special requirements that students need to work as an intern in California? And if so, what is, what are those and what's the time frame? Yeah, so there's, there's really just one big one and it's, you do require a California intern license. So if, there were candidates that had applied in and were accepted into this immersion, Spanish immersion summer internship, they would want to begin the process of applying for their California intern license immediately. So they'd want to access the California Board of Pharmacy website and walk through those applications. The minimum time frame typically to obtain a, a pharmacy intern license here would be about 45 days, um, maybe a little bit more. So it's something that we encourage students that if they're even considering it or they, they they're thinking about coming out and practicing as an intern in California for the summer through this experience or any other experience, that they begin that process sooner rather than later. We think of CVS Health, enormous company, so many resources for not only patients, but their employees. Ron, I'm thinking of the investment made here. And I know that a a corporation as large and as powerful as CVS Health will definitely have a strategy. And I I kind of was like quick piecing this together, but CVS supported these interns with this specialized course. And I'm thinking, well, what's the expected outcome for the interns and the patients that they're going to serve? Because I know it's interconnected. So I'm definitely wondering about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. They are interconnected. So really for interns, um, probably the most important thing we wanted them is we wanted to make them aware of the key cultural notes relevant to caring for Spanish speaking population. Uh, Obviously that's the base. They need to know that and that will help guide then what they do the rest of the time. But uh, and then just with their patient, we really wanted to provide, you know, give the best kind of pa- best patient care. So we want them to learn just key phrases for establishing a pharmacist patient relationship. And then, and then how do they build on that, particularly with the Hispanic population? Uh, we want them really also to be made aware of strategies to better cuni- communicate with Hispanic patients. And then really just learn how to ask questions that could uh, guide the patient, uh, that helps guide the patient, provide the necessary information uh, so that uh, that we can make appropriate decisions to improve the patient's health. So everything was really based on giving them the, the competencies uh, that they needed to do all that. And obviously the best way to do that is, is to give them direct patient care with the, with the Spanish speaking people, uh, patients. So for the patients then really, the outcome is to be more effective in helping them on their path to better health. So again, that's the purpose of our organization. I think Kara had mentioned it earlier about helping people on their path to better health. So that was really our main objective for our patients. And we know that 
uh, providing someone who they understand and feel comfortable communicating with, uh, not just because uh, the intern speaks Spanish, but because the intern is more culturally competent, will really improve the care that we believe that they will receive. And then just making their visit to the pharmacy more effective and enjoyable. Uh, and again, when, when you see that, when that happens, particularly when the intern builds that relationship with the patient, uh, it again just helps build, uh, provide them a path to better health. So it's, it's all about ultimately pr- giving the best possible care to our patients uh, and that's, uh, that's how it's interconnected. So, um, it's really the, it's really the expected outcome. That is our main outcome, just making sure that we improve the health of our patients. And in this case, Spanish speaking ones. Kara, Ron, I really appreciate you rounding out this podcast series dedicated to the Spanish immersion project through CVS health. I'm kind of excited that we had an opportunity to kick this off. We've been getting a lot of good feedback. If there are questions, if there are people out there that want to engage, want to get involved in this. Kara, I'm listening to the show. I want to get involved. I want to understand where I can get more information. You may be jogging, driving. So obviously just listen. You'll have the links down in the show notes, but Kara, where can they go to learn more? So they can go to jobs.cvshealth.com and search under keyword Spanish immersion. And then once you put in Spanish immersion into that keyword search under the job search, it's going to bring up a list of all of our 2018 Spanish immersion summer internship programs. There will be cities and states listed next to each of them, and they can apply into any position that interests them the most in the location that they're most interested in. Kara, Ron, thank you so much for being part of the pharmacy podcast and this special Spanish immersion internship podcast series sponsored by CVS Health. Thank you guys so much. Thank Thank you so much, Todd, and good luck with your uh, Spanish training. (laughs) Thank you. You're listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network with the CVS Health team talking about the Spanish Immersion Internship Project.